Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. This is a continuation of a video series where I'm taking the same RAW file and I'm processing it in several different applications. Yesterday, I took this RAW file and I processed it in On One Photo Raw 2021, and this is what I came up with. Before that, I took that same RAW file and processed it in Exposure X6. Before that, I took it and I processed it in Capture One, version 21. And finally, I started off the series by taking this RAW file and processing it in Lightroom. So there are my edits in Lightroom, Capture One, version 21, Exposure X6, On One Photo Raw 2021. And today, we're going to take this RAW file and I'm going to do my pr best to process it in Photolab 4. Now, Photolab 4, uh, for those of you that may have downloaded my free software comparison guide, if you haven't, uh, in the description below this video, I'll have uh, instructions how you could get your copy of it. Um, in that guide, I mentioned that Photolab 4 has a bit of a learning curve because they do things a little bit differently compared to, let's say, you know, Lightroom or On One or Luminar or something like that. Um, also, if you want to download this file, in the description below this video, there'll be a link. You could download it and you could process it, whatever application you use, and just mess around with it and see what you come up with. So Photolab 4 does things a little bit differently. So if you're coming over from, let's say, Lightroom, there might be a little bit of a learning curve. I'm going to close down this left-hand panel just to give me a little more room. And over on the right-hand side, we have, you know, controls, but they're slightly different. Um, first of all, I like to go to what's called DxO Smart Lighting first. Often I use spot weighted, or if I'm, you know, image like this where it's not, doesn't really have a strong subject, I'll just use uniform. Spot weighted will help if you have a person in the scene or something like that. And typically what I'll do here is I'll just move this intensity up. And basically what it's doing, it's just opening up the shadows and a raining in the highlights a little bit I would say so I just open those up there and then I'll jump down to what they call selective tone and then here I'll bring in the highlights a little more and I'll skip midtones for now and I'll open up those shadows just a little bit more um typically you know I'll just then go with midtones and see where I like it move it left or right and blacks now to get clipping indicators with Photolab 4 if I can remember how to do it uh, is a little different than some of the other programs. You know, some of the other ones you hold in the Alt or Option key or hit the J key on your keyboard. Here you have to hit Shift B for the shadow clipping indicators. And you can see that blue overlay just a little bit on these leaves on the beach. And let me bring them out a little more. You can see the blue coming in now. So Shift B for the shadows clipping indicators. And then hit Shift B again to turn those off. And then if you want to clip, see how you're clipping the highlights or the whites, shift W. And I'm not clipping any of those, but if I take like highlights there, you can see I'm starting to clip highlights now. So we'll just back that off. And then hit, remember to hit shift W again to turn those off. So those are the clipping indicators again, probably a little bit different uh, than some of the other uh, applications. Now, um, it's, I want to add just a little more contrast. So I'm going to go down to contrast. It has two different sliders, contrast and micro contrast. Regular contrast works really well on um, uh, Photolab 4. Um, micro contrast works well as well, but you have to be careful with it because you could really get that kind of HDR look if you go a little bit too far with that. So just be careful with the micro contrast. So I'll just kind of eke those up just a little bit. Then we're going to jump over and do some of the color adjustments that I've been doing in all these uh, different, on this image and all these different applications I've been using. So I'm going to go to this color tab right here, and I'm going to jump down to the color wheel, and we'll go over to orange. And similar to what I've done before, I'm going to put up saturation, make it a little darker, and then go to yellow and do the same thing, put up saturation, make it a little darker. Then I'll jump over to blue, and I'm just going to make it a little darker, like that. So, so far, actually, it's looking uh, pretty good. So, uh, we go through, I don't think there's anything else on this tab that I want to do. Uh, here, uh, noise and sharpening. 
I mentioned uh, several times throughout this series that this is shot at a very low ISO or ISO, if you prefer to say it like that, and there's really no noise in it at all, so I'm not really worried about doing any noise. Um, their deep frame noise reduction works on RAW files, and it's probably the best noise reduction that's built in to one of these apps that um, I'll be going over these different apps, you know, on one photo, on one um, photo raw, Luminar, Lightroom, Capture One, all that stuff. This was probably the best, although uh, it only works on raw files. In this case here, as I mentioned, there's not really a lot of noise. Um, I'll just sharpen it up a little bit, even though it's a landscape. I really don't need to worry about the sharpness, but we'll mess around with that just a touch. And I'm pretty much done. Um, one thing uh, I should add, you know, on all the other apps, I added a vignette. There's really no built-in vignette uh, tool in PhotoLab 4. If you go over to the Light tab, you'll see at the bottom it has vignetting. This is actually just the vignetting correction for your lens. It's not like adding a dark or a white vignette to your image. You just it just doesn't have it. Uh, so that's not something I could do uh, to this image. One thing I do want to do, um, even though uh, with this using the DxO Smart Lighting, I was able to brighten up the cliffs in the background a lot compared to some of the other applications, I just want to show you how to use a local adjustment. So I'm going to brighten up the cliffs in the background. So I'm going to go to the Local Adjustment tab, which is right here. And we're going to turn it on. I'm going to just click on tools right there so that we have tools. Now you'll default to a brush. And you can see over here we have brush attributes. You have the size of the brush, feathering, flow, and opacity. I'll keep all of those up at 100. And you have, then we could just brush now on, um, on the cliffs. Now, before I even brush, I found uh, with the latest update, to photo lab for there's a bit of a bug it comes up with an error but the error doesn't seem to be really an error because it works fine uh, let me see if it does it i'll start see that loading error it says right in the middle um it says that but it seems to work fine so so i'm not even worried about it so we'll just come in and again i'm just going to paint real quick very quickly i should say Come in here and do the best we can. Try to get all this painted. I'm missing a little bit, or I'm going over the edges, I should say. I'll show you how to correct that in a minute. So we'll come in here, go out to the edge, come in, up in there. Okay, now as soon as I let go of the left mouse button, you'll see this little um, kind of chart comes up, right? So we could go here to light. And we have, if you just hover over each of these sliders, it will tell you what it does. There's exposure. Next one is contrast, micro contrast, clear view plus, highlights, midtones, shadows, and blacks. I'm going to go to shadows. Now, as soon as I start moving it, that overlay I painted will disappear. So we could open up shadows. You can see how we opened up shadows. And we'll go back and we'll go to the color tab, which is this one right here. And we have vibrance, saturation. Temperature, tint, and hue. And we're going to go to saturation, increase saturation. Now, I mentioned that, uh, see how I have that halo around there because I went too far. And hopefully, you could see it right in there. To erase that, hold the Alt or Option key in. Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac. And you'll actually have an erase brush. So you can come in and, and erase anywhere where you painted accidentally. So I'm not going to do the whole thing. I missed a lot of different areas. And then when you're all done using the brush tool, go over here and click on close. Now, um, again, I probably would in normal instances finish it off with a vignette, but there is really no vignette uh, tool in PhotoLab 4, so I can't do that. So this is my final edit in PhotoLab 4. Um, again, as I mentioned in that software comparison guide, Capture One in PhotoLab 4 will probably have the biggest learning curve if you're coming over from, let's say, Lightroom, uh, because their process engines are considerably different. They do a great job. It's just you're going to have to, it's going to take you a little while to really 
uh, learn how to use these apps. So that's it for this video. Now my goal is tomorrow to do uh, Luminar AI. Um, Luminar, uh, I mentioned in the past few videos, they're supposed to be coming out with a maintenance update, which usually doesn't mean any new features, but I wanted to wait till that came out just so that I'm doing this video, doing that video using the latest version of Luminar. But if they don't come out with it by tomorrow, I'll probably just do it anyway. So we could start wrapping up this series. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.